Well, welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Uh, happy Wednesday. Hope your week is going well. Uh, super excited to be on another Bytespeed webinar uh, to share some really cool information. Um, we have kind of some returning partners and returning faces here uh, on the webinar this afternoon. Um, definitely excited to get some updates about uh, one of our, our biggest uh, career exploration draws, our awesome partner in Be More Colorful and CareerView XR. Um, I'll let Matt, if you want to just introduce yourself for those that haven't been here before, uh, we'll maybe start there. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Josh. Um, so my name is Matt Shosey. I'm the CEO and co-founder of CareerView XR. Um, we are a platform that uh, has created a library of immersive field trip experiences that bring job sites into the classroom. Um, so our focus is on showing real people performing real work in real environments and bringing those those work environments into the classroom so that students can be more aware of all of the career choices that are out there. Awesome. And thanks again for, for taking some time this afternoon to share with us. I know we've got kind of some updates to run through and uh, would love to, to hear more about what's going on with the platform and your production grant and some of the other cool things that are going on. Um, just some housekeeping stuff before we dive in, everybody. Uh, as attendees, you can all use the Q&A function or the chat. Um, I have those both up and I'll keep an eye on them. Matt's going to kind of be the primary presenter today, uh, but I'll keep an eye on those. If you have questions, please throw them in in uh, either of those uh, boxes. We'll kind of get to them as they come up or, or at the end, uh, we'll set aside some time to, to kind of run through things. But um, just to let you know, those are both available. The recording, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, uh, you can use the just the comment section down below. We'll keep an eye on those and, and make sure to reach out as well. Um, for everybody registered, uh, you'll get the recording and an email afterwards. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna, just going to turn it over to you, Matt. Feel free to, to share your screen. Take it away. Great. Well, thank you, Josh. Um, go ahead and share oh, share sound also on my screen. All right. Um, well, first off, thank you all for making time. Uh, I know... Um, as educators, you're crazy busy. Your time's really compressed and limited. So I appreciate you uh, dedicating an hour, hour-ish <laughs> to, to our chat today. Um, as, as I mentioned, my name is Matt. I'm the CEO and co-founder of CareerVXR. Um, and CareerVXR is a career exploration platform. Um, we have created uh, a library of field trip experiences that are accessible from any device. So when I say any device, I mean that we have web-based experiences that can be accessed from desktop, tablet, mobile, um, touchscreen displays, um, but we also have supplementary virtual reality videos that can be accessed from any mainstream VR headset. So we really are uh, working to, to build out a content library that um, it is, is able to meet any school where they're at, regardless of what uh, what hardware they've got, uh, what hardware you have available. Uh, Career VXR is something that will play nicely with uh, with your older hardware, with your newer stuff. Um, and and we've been really fortunate to uh, to work with a great partner in Bytespeed um, in helping uh, helping schools find that that right mix of hardware. So I want to make sure I start off with a huge thank you to Josh and his team. Um, we are uh, we started off years ago, um, just my wife and I uh, co-founded the company. Our very first laptop that we started building all the experiences on was a bite speed laptop. So uh, the, this has been a wonderful partnership uh, for us from the very start. And, and the fact that now we're able to talk to educators on a national scale is, is especially exciting. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of an overview, kind of, of our journey, how we ended up where we're at, and then we'll talk about um, uh, some updates on the production side, what's new on the horizon that we're going to be building out. Um, but uh, I want to start with just that the concept of VR. We hear a lot about VR um, right now, and and we'll we'll often hear folks say that, oh, well, hey, it's really cool that this VR technology is here now, or you know, all of these great ideas about how to immerse yourself in in a virtual world. Um, when the reality of it is that this is something that people have been thinking about for almost 200 years. The very first VR viewers were stereoscopic viewers that uh, you viewed two black and white photographs, and it felt like you were there. Um, so this concept of 
being present in a space that you've never been able to be in before is is very very uh, it, it it's it's not new. Um, we had started um, playing around with cardboard VR viewers uh, about six seven years ago. Now we're working with more of the mainstream headsets um, that that you, you may be more familiar with MetaQuest, uh, Vive headsets. Um, Lenovo, Pico, there, there are a variety of different headsets that, uh, that um, are, are implemented in a school setting. Um, I'm going to start by just uh, introducing the very first headset I ever worked with. Um, if anybody recognizes this, this is the Nintendo Virtual Boy. Josh, I see you smiling. Did you invest in Nintendo Virtual Boy back in the 90s? <laughs> I I did not own one myself, but I have a friend who had one, and it was at, at the cool, at the time, it was the, the coolest thing, but... <laughs> So Nintendo Virtual Boy, um, I uh, I bought this at Kmart on layaway back in 1995, back when those were still two things that, that existed, Kmart and layaway. Um, and I remember being so excited um, and I got it home and immediately it was, I did the unboxing and I set it up and it's like, well, why is there a stand? I thought this was a VR headset. I'm thinking I'm going to be able to wear this thing. Well, no, that's not what this is. Um, and then the controller is really just a glorified Nintendo controller that has an extra directional pad on it. Um, and I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, the design isn't great, uh, but maybe the experience is good. And then we got into playing the games and uh, they they had little little bit to be desired. Uh, they held a common theme, red pixels on a black screen. Um, so this is uh, my first VR experience almost 30 years ago. And I remember being really disenchanted with this and saying like, okay, yeah, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing valuable here. Um, and um, fast forward, you know, about 22 years to, to eight years ago when, when my wife Katie and I founded our, uh, our, our business, um, we'd been playing around with immersive imagery, primarily on web-based uh, devices. So standard devices doing home virtual tours and, and tourism experiences. But then we started to hit on um, creating educational experiences, getting inside of job sites. And we started really seeing that resonate with kids and teachers and, and even industry uh, in, in industry partners. Um, the I'm gonna play a quick video here. This is one of our very first career uh, themed experiences we ever created. This is my daughter, Vivian, as uh, any good entrepreneurs would, we test these things on our children. So this is uh, about four years ago. Um, Vivian is inside an airplane hangar, but I want you to, to watch her reactions and listen to her. Um, I'm, in, I'm including this because this is one of those moments where we decided, okay, career exploration is, this is, we can inspire students. We can solve a problem with this. You want to go there? Yes. Why do you want to go there? Hey, why does that airplane come on? Oh, sorry? Hmm. Why do you want to go there? Because I want to. That airplane looks so cool. Can I, can you give me a video of it? So I, I include that video because Vivian is her her reaction is raw emotion. Um, it this is this is a very authentic and real, and she wants to learn more about this career. Um, this was one of those moments where he said, "Okay, yeah, there there's something to this." Um, fast forwarding a bit more, um, this was Vivian's first headset that she ever got to try, like her first real uh, standalone VR headset. So. Her experience was a bit better than than mine uh, of of decades past. Uh, she actually the first VR game she ever played is Beat Saber. I don't know if everyone's messed around with that at all, but that's super engaging. Um, uh, they well blue pixels now as, as well as red, um, but uh, I I love uh, just seeing how how excited and engaged students get with these immersive experiences. Um, we spend a lot of time visiting with students in the classroom. And when we're, when we're working with students, we're always asking them, what are, what are the things that you'd like to see? Um, what can we create that would inspire you to wanna to learn about careers? Um, this was actually an event about three years ago that I was at called Marketplace for Kids. Um, these students um, 
we're working, uh, well, we're, we're at Marketplace for Kids actually um, showing different industries, um, entrepreneurship, um, just different ideas for, for what pathway they might want to pursue. I was supposed to be teaching these students how to create a virtual reality film. And I mentioned the career experiences we we're creating and it was all that they wanted to talk about. Um, but I'll, I'll let you uh, listen to that. We also create interactive experiences that help you explore different careers. Like, have you seen those big wind turbines out in the country? Yeah. We've got a virtual reality experience on top of one of those. So you can what? see what it's like standing up there. I wanna do it. We've got other VR experiences showing what's it like inside a diesel shop or inside an emergency room. All kinds of different career options that you could look at. Yeah, do you have a veterinarian experience? We do not, but I would love. I so hold on, hold. I, I would love. I would love to create one, and I love the enthusiasm. Right now, we've got twelve experiences. Um, We're working on twelve more, but I want to create hundreds. I want kids to be able to go and see any career that they might want to explore. How cool would it? What, what do you guys think? How cool would it be to be able yeah. to explore careers or jobs in virtual reality? It would be amazing because then, because then, then you would actually um, figure out what you want instead of actually like going to school and getting the degree for it and then actually applying for the job and getting it and then figuring out that you hate it. I couldn't have seen that any better than this. Oh my gosh, you're, <laughs> that is, that is perfect, that is spot on. Because a lot of people do that. They go to school for a long, 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 long time and then they find out it's for the wrong thing. So what we do is we create those experiences so that you can get a taste of basically anything. You could see what a veterinarian is doing. You could see okay. what, um, now, uh, what, what are some other fun careers that you might, jobs that you might want to try? Mm -hmm. We'll go in the back. Paleontologist. Paleontologist. Do you have a paleontologist? <laughs> when, uh, we don't have a paleontologist. I would love to create one because do you know what? When I was four years old and my preschool teacher asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I told her paleontologist. Okay, so I'm surprised we, you knew what that was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do, let's do, everyone just one, one, one job, a career experience that you'd like to see in VR. Just rapid fire, and then we're gonna. Well, then we gotta get moving on to us. What would you like to see? Cool. A school teacher. Horse trainer. A horse trainer. What would you like to see? Oh. A business guy. Business person. Yeah. Okay. What would you like to see? Virtual reality filmmaker. A virtual reality filmmaker. Well, Thanks. guess what? We're kind of making that right now. <laughs> what would you like to um, see? Working at a college. Working at a college. So a professor or a researcher. Yep. Veterinarian. Yeah, of course. And um, horse trainer. Like, um, horse trainer. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, we've got to jump into the rest of this. I love all your suggestions because we are creating things that we want kids to get really excited about. So I share that clip because that is that right there is our why. That is why the Career VXR platform exists. Um, being able to to satisfy the curiosity and and inspire those young minds who want to go out, they want to learn what a business person is doing. They want to learn what a veterinarian is doing. And I'm proud to say too, that uh, we have produced the veterinarian experience. We've got a paleontology experience that we'll be filming uh, coming up this summer. Um, a lot of the ideas that students bring to the table are things that we work to prioritize and go out and film. Um, we have, have built this platform from the ground up. We want to make sure that we're creating something that we know will be effective in the classroom. The best way to do that is by working with students and teachers um, throughout the entire development process. Um, the, the way that we know that it's working um, is we're work, really working to understand the problem. 90% um, of students say that observing is a great way to learn about careers. And 70% of those students say they don't get enough. Um, students like these sixth graders who want to be able to go out on, onto an active construction site, but they can't. It's not safe to bring a group of students onto a construction site where um, steel I-beams are being swung overhead and there's all sorts of hazards. And even if the hazards aren't there, the logistics of getting that scheduled, it's very hard to make, uh, make it equitable so that the same experience can be provided to lots of different students. It just doesn't scale. And I'm gonna be the first person to admit that in-person is best. I think that's the best way to go and explore careers, but it's seldom possible. It is not something that can be done at scale. And if students don't see these careers, if they don't understand that it's an opportunity, it's a possibility, then it's not a choice for them. And the problem we're working to solve with CareerView is ensuring that no student goes without an opportunity to pursue that dream job just because they never knew it existed. Um, 
So what is ClearView? Um, it's, it's an observational platform. We have web-based tours that work on any device um, and companion virtual reality videos that are focused on uh, creating interactive and immersive real world environments um, that allow, allow you to tour facilities accessible from all devices, including VR headsets, uh, really focus on being immersive, educational, informative, and, and doing this in a very authentic way. Um, and it's fun. Um, students love exploring CareerView because it's a real location that they'd never be able to go see in person. Um, and I, I want, really wanna emphasize that the CareerView platform, while there are gamified elements within it, there's a bit of inter interactivity in it, it is not a simulated environment. This is real people performing real work in real environments. Um, and the, the initial feedback that we're getting is really positive. Um, we have, after a single career review session, 67% of students uh, reporting that they considered something new, 90% saying that they wanted to learn more about those careers, and 95% saying that it helped them narrow their options, which at the end of the day is really our, our responsibility as, as, as educators and as folks that are working to help align students with the future that they want to see for themselves we need to be finding ways to be able to encourage them to explore their world and understand all the opportunities that are out there. Um, on the opportunities front, we spend a lot of time getting in front of classes and, and I love the suggestions that students provide. Initially, when we started going down this path, I thought we were gonna get a ton of, um, I wanna see NFL quarterback or I wanna see NASCAR driver. And we get those questions every once in a while, but by and large, it, it's the exception, not the rule. They want to see things like construction worker and pilot and veterinarian and nurse and beekeeper, uh, agronomist. We've got requests for multiple times from, from students. And, and those are the sorts of things that we are working to build out in our content library. Right now, we have a lot of healthcare skilled trades and manufacturing experiences, but we're working to expand into tech. And even things like an NFL experience. Well, you know, maybe not a day in the life of a quarterback. Maybe we recreate that at some point in time. But whenever I get that question from students, I always say, okay, well, let's think about the NFL. And let's think about the number of quarterbacks that are in the NFL. Dozens, right? But how many chefs and coaching staff and physical therapists and computer programmers and statisticians, and the list goes on and on and on. You can have a career in the NFL if that's your passion. There's way more than quarterback. But if we don't expose students to those careers and let them know that, hey, this is available in this industry you're really excited about, they're not going to be thinking about that as an option. And that's really the focus of the career review platform is, is breaking down the barriers, providing accessibility to all of these career pathways that students aren't even thinking about because they've never been mentioned. Um, talk a little bit of a, about a difference between Career VXR and other solutions that are out there. Um, most other VR solutions that are out there are kind of focused on tasks. Um, it may be a simulated training environment. A lot of times they're dependent on headsets. And I want to be very clear that um, I am not uh, in, in any way um, saying that other VR solutions are uh, are something that you shouldn't consider. You absolutely should. Um, the big difference with CareerView XR is that we feel that there's a big gap with, uh, with what's available in the marketplace. There are a lot of great simulations, but if you want students to be thinking about different career pathways and exposing them to a lot of different uh, opportunities, handing them a tool and saying, learn this task is not the best way to go about doing that. We feel the best way about, to go about doing that is by showing real world experiences by allowing students to observe and learn by watching and create something that's accessible from any device so that it's not dependent on a new piece of hardware. Because as cool as VR is, um, I will be a champion for, for VR and extended reality all of the time. Um, but it, it, it creates some, some accessibility barriers. And those are things that, that companies like ours and we're really focused on making sure that the introduction of new hardware does not create, does not widen the digital divide that they, we're well aware of. Um, so CareerView XR, um, as I mentioned, brings field trips into the classroom. Um, it is accessible on every device, um, whether that is a personally issued device to a student or uh, a, a touch screen that is at the front of the classroom or VR headsets that you may have one or entire classroom set. 
Um, we really want to focus on making Career VXR accessible, um, meeting teachers and students where they're at with the devices that they already have implemented in the class. Um, just a little bit high level about, about our company. Um, we are a small, smaller organization, um, but uh, we, we've been growing quickly. Uh, we started off as a husband and wife team. That's my wife, Katie, and I in the upper left. Um, we're a bootstrapped organization. We have actually clients across 14 states now uh, with two state deployments. Um, we have helped a number of schools find legislative and grant funding uh, to support the, the purchase of not just our solution, but other solutions that pair well with our solution. Also, um, hardware solutions that are out there. Um, and we work very closely with employers and industry partners to make sure that the experiences that we're creating are very representative of those careers and of those industries so that it's not just us coming up with here's what we want to say about this career. It's us relying on subject matter experts who are professionals in those fields, saying the things that they would say if a, a group of students was coming to tour their facility. Um, one other thing I want to mention, this is actually kind of segues into uh, our, our production grants updates. Um, back in 2023, uh, we had applied for an education innovation award called the Yoss Prize. Um, and we were uh, one of 2,600 applicants. And out of those 2,600 applicants, there were 33 semifinalists that were allowed to pitch for a $1 million prize. Um, we did not make it to the, the final round. Um, we ended up as, as uh, just one of the 33 semifinalists. But when I say just, um, along with that came some great recognition and great connections um, to, to a lot of movers and shakers in, in the ed tech industry. Um, and we were able to leverage the relationships and the prize dollars that we received for being a semifinalist into building out um, what, what we have uh, coined our, our Career VXR production grant. Um, so we just closed the first round of the production grant where every year we will be soliciting schools from around the country to tell us about those amazing employer partnerships that they have and to, to write up a case for why we should come out and create a career view experience at that location. Um, we have awarded production grants in Maine, um, just outside of the Chicago area, and uh, in Wisconsin as well. We'll be producing at least six additional experiences that are coming straight from schools and, and the partnerships that, um, that they have established with their employers. Those experiences will create content that's locally relevant for those schools, but those experiences will also be distributed to all of the subscribed audiences around the country. Now, this production grant is something that we're going to be offering annually, so I want to encourage everybody to, to be following our pages and be on the lookout for that, because if it's something that you're interested in, um, we would love to, to see an application from you. Um, we have a five-year goal of, of producing at least one experience in every state, um, so we're, we're very hopeful that we have we see a lot of applications um, when, when this gets announced uh, again for year two, which I would assume would be kind of toward, probably toward the end of the summer. Um, so just something to be on the lookout for, um, and also something that just signifies our commitment to making sure that the platform is staying relevant to what schools need by committing to producing the things that they are requesting. Um, so we can maybe pause there for a second. We're going to jump in to talk about VR headsets, but any any questions uh, so far? I know I uh, was there was there a Q and A question, Josh. Um, yeah, yep. Just, uh, David Cliff had a question about uh, a gift card incentive. Um, I don't, I don't think there's going to be a, a gift card, so to speak, but I think we're going to be able to send a uh, little swag bags to everybody, uh, through some email follow-up after the webinar. So, um, hopefully, uh, you're still going to stick around and, uh, definitely if you have other questions, please feel free to, uh, throw them in the chat, uh, and the Q and A right now. Perfect. Um, and I'll mention too, you know, we can kind of get to, to talking about um, you know, other opportunities, um, you know, with regard to, to the Kirby platform. We are, um, through, through ByteSpeed, we are providing, um, while, while we have uh, supply left in stock, we are providing at least one headset at no cost for every new CareerView subscription. So that is uh, another incentive that we have out there. We want to make sure that, that every school is is able to at least get that very first headset so that you're able to start thinking about how do we implement this um, in, in our organization. 
Um, it's not one of these headsets. It's a slightly nicer one. <laughs> we can talk about that a little more later. Um, we work a lot with, uh, I, I mentioned before, HTC Vive headsets are a great enterprise solution. Um, we've uh, also, I think Josh, um, Byte, Byte Speed sells meta head, headsets as well, but really any of the mainstream headsets um, will work for our content. It's really important for us to be device agnostic. Um, there, there are very few headsets that don't work. And that's basically because they have walked down the ability. It's kind of a closed ecosystem. You can't load anything to those headsets. And I guess that would be one of those scenarios where I would encourage you to really think hard about, do you want a closed ecosystem solution or do you want something that's going to allow you kind of free reign to be able to, to implement the solutions that you need for, for your environments? Um, but um, in, in talking about the the application of headsets. So we have the web-based content that can be viewed on any device. Then we also have VR, uh, VR content that can be viewed in, in VR headsets. The a common misconception that, that schools will have is that I, I need to buy an entire set of hardware and that makes the entire implementation process cost prohibitive. That's just not the case. Um, school, we have a lot of schools that have deployed just a single headset to build a successful program, and then they can grow their their hardware inventory based on the success of how they're using the the smaller number of headsets at the start. And all of these videos that I'm going to show you these these are um, single events where I've gone with a group of students, and we have a single headset, and we're able to talk about careers and explore careers. Um, I'll play each of these videos, but I want you to you know, take notice of the students' reactions, but also watch the screen behind them, because we're actually mirroring what's on that headset onto the screen behind them. And what that allows us to do is we can get one student completely immersed, and the entire class is engaged. No, that's a th that's a third of the climb. You guys, so you guys climbed it, right? Uh, I didn't. Uh, one of our uh, one of our staff members did. So I'm having this great conversation with this student about the wind turbine technician career while he feels like he's there. Um, he's not just watching a video, he's having an experience. And, and that's something that's going to resonate with him. Um, this next video, this young gentleman, he is at, uh, he's at the zoo. Um, and we are in a class of high school students. Um, and I want you to watch closely to his reaction. Uh, but more importantly, after his reaction, his classmates reaction. So an entire class of high school students, attentive and engaged, each waiting their turn and choosing a different experience. Um, this is what I love about Kuruvi. Students get excited about the authenticity of these things. They want to see things that are real. They want to see things that are attainable. Um, this uh, next video, this young lady is inside an elevator shaft. Elevators, escalators, and so you're in a swivel chair, make sure you spin around. Look all the way up. Holy cow. I, I love that shriek because she, she feels like she is there in, in that elevator shaft. And, and that's one of the things that, that is most valuable at the CareerView platform is it allows students to envision, to envision themselves as the participants in, in those careers. Um, so different ways that CareerView gets used. Um, we have some schools that'll have a headset in their media center, some that will tie it in with uh, health science or construction careers. Um, others that will have the career counselor be the one that's, that's managing the, the headset inventory. Um, it can be added on to career lessons. Uh, we've had after school programs, clubs and organizations using it. And, and another uh, area where you might not think is when you're talking about career pathways, um, being able to help teachers and students, or excuse me, teachers and parents really understand what are these career paths? 
Because as much as we need students to understand what career paths are, it's really important for parents to know about those as well, because they're such an influential part of that career decision making. And if they're not understanding what these careers are, or they're basing their decisions or recommendations to their kids based on stereotypes or misperceptions, you might have a student missing out on that dream job because they don't have all of the accurate information they need to, to make an effective decision on it. Um, so in terms of like managing content, um, it really depends on, on the, the, the managing content on the headset devices really depends on the number of headsets that yet you're deploying. Um, right now, um, like through when, when we work through bite speed, uh, when you get one of the headsets that comes along with one of our, uh, with, with the purchase of the, of the career view platform, we load all of that content directly to the headset. It's pretty much ready to go, um, out of the box. Um, but that can, at scale, that can be a little bit manually intensive. We are working on building out an app that would allow um, more real-time pulling and pushing of content on those devices. Um, but when you're looking at doing this at scale, um, looking at some sort of MDM solution like Manage XR or Arbor XR, there are some really great solutions that are out there that allow you to manage that, that entire fleet. Um, again, this is not something I only rec I only mention these because these are things that you can be thinking about. They're, it's not something that we sell. Um, it, it may be something that Bytespeed has available as well. But just things to be thinking about as you're looking at if you're ever looking at scaling a, a VR program or or a, a, a VR initiative at your school. There are solutions out there that can help you manage all of these things. Um, Choosing a headset, that's one of the one of the biggest decisions you can make. The team at Bytespeed is, is uh, they're your go-to for uh, for visiting with all that. They'll make sure to steer you in the right direction if you're looking at uh, at career view solutions. These are the three headsets that Bytespeed sells that, uh, um, or I guess as of the time I created the slide, the three set headsets that uh, Bytespeed sells that that will readily uh, uh, display our content. But if you have other stuff, you know, certainly don't. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out and ask questions. Um, if you've got other hardware in the school, uh, we are more than happy to answer questions on, is that something that'll work? And we can also provide demo content so that you can make sure that, you know, you can load a couple demo videos and everything works well and plays well so that you know, or you have, you have your confidence that this is gonna be a solution that's gonna work well um, in, in your school. Um, Cause yeah, at the end of the day, that's what's most important. Um, helping helping your students determine what's on that horizon. And that's what I've got uh, for for content. Um, looks like we've got about 25 minutes yet. So I'd, I'd be more than happy to entertain any questions that folks have. So, yeah, just a reminder for everybody, the Q&A and the chat both work. Uh, maybe while those are coming in, uh, Matt, can you talk about kind of the, the roadmap for the rest of 2024, some of the new content that's coming, yep. or, you know, if, if you can share some of that info while people maybe type their questions out? Absolutely. We have a, a large number of manufacturing experiences that are going to be deployed. And when I say manufacturing, um, this was a really important uh, series of experiences for us to create because a lot of times people think, you know, okay, greasy assembly line, um, ill lit. Um, but the manufacturing experiences that we're creating, some of this is biopharmaceutical manufacturing. It's happening in clean rooms. Some of it is precision manufacturing that is, um, you know, refining things down to uh, sub millimeter um, accuracy. Um, you're doing programming, you're doing all sorts of things that you, that you wouldn't traditionally pair with that preconceived notion you may have of what manufacturing is. So I'm really excited. They're going to be between 12 to 15 total experiences in the manufacturing industry when all is said and done, ranging in you know everything from uh, creating enormous fifth wheel trailers to uh, to uh, RNA <laughs> vaccines that uh, that are shipped off to uh, ship shipped off to hospitals around the world. Um, so so really an incredible array of manufacturing stuff. 
Um, we are also releasing a number of rural healthcare experiences. Um, that's been one that uh, we've been finding that that rural schools in in particular have been very interested in career view. Um, urban schools too, but I think that rural schools have have kind of felt that they're so far away from so many different locations that um, this is a really good solution for them. Um, so. We, at their request, we've been creating some rural school experiences. Um, the uh, We still haven't determined what all of our production partners or, excuse me, our production grant winners will be creating, but we do know that's, you know, out in Maine, um, a couple of the ones have been proposed. One was a uh, uh, boat building experience. Um, another was lobster fishing experience. We haven't done anything out on the water yet. And that's where, you know, creating some of those things that are just fun and exciting, even though there's not high, super high demand for those across the country, creating some of those things that are curiosities that get kids excited about exploring careers. That's, that's important too. We want to make sure that there are some of those, you know, just really interesting, unique and fun that gets students thinking, okay, hey, that that's kind of cool. Okay, now I want to go try these other, you know, couple other dozen experiences. Um, we're always on the lookout for for new experiences, uh, new industries. Um, we've had a lot of requests for agriculture experiences. We're working on building out an agriculture module that would, um, we've got a handful of those right now, but there's a lot more that we can be doing. Um, so I guess yeah, technology also, that that's another one we've gotten a lot of requests on. We've got a couple of those. Uh, but we need to build that out more, and and we're we're currently working on getting connected with some uh, some industry partners there to make the library more robust in that industry. Super, uh, and the, the current library is up to I I know there were just a couple of new ones that launched yep. like in the last month or so. Seventy one. Um, Seventy one. Seventy one. And um, by by the end of the year, we'll be well over a hundred. That's awesome. I'm going to drop the link to the uh, the website here for everybody that wants to check out uh, Career View uh, a little bit more in detail. Um, some of the things that I, I love and part of the reason why Bytespeed has jumped on board with Career View is just the, the flexibility of the platform to work on so many different devices. Everything from, you know, your tablet Chromebook all the way up to the VR headset. So um, being able to, like Matt was saying, be accessible in the school district and be able to, to, you know, have a whole class engaged and not worry about the financial aspect of having to buy, you know, multiple headsets for a class or for a district um, really gives you some flexibility to jump in and get kids of all ages uh, ready to, to, you know, look at those careers at a little deeper level. Um one of the other things that I, I do like, and, and there's a couple of jobs that have it on there. No, I know Matt, but the some of the career outlook information uh, that's part of those jobs. Eric, can you talk a little bit about kind of what's the what's included when you go into an experience actually on the website? Yep. So when you go into an experience on the website, it's primarily focused at, at on the environments that that you would that you would be. Um, that you'd be working in on the the skills and the attributes of, of someone who who would be interested in that sort of career. Um, we don't get super far into the um, like the the near term outlook for demand for those. And the reason for that is most schools have a career information system that has a lot of that information. And that's where we're working. We're starting to work at on partnering with those career information systems so that you can get real-time data from the experts that provide that. And then you can get the authentic career experiences that pair with um, visualizing what those careers are like from us. Um, so, so we really, we don't wanna try to be all things to all people. We wanna be the best at creating those authentic career experiences, but we absolutely understand the value and the importance of getting that, that real-time career data, which is why we've developed the platform in a way that it can be readily integrated into those other, uh, into those other systems. Awesome. Well, I haven't seen any other uh, questions come through. I guess for, for those of you uh, that are still in attendance this afternoon, 
Um, if you'd like more information or uh, you'd want to get uh, kind of a little bit more personalized call set up, uh, we'd love to talk with you about what career view looks like in your school, in your district. Um, there is a form. I'll link that here in the chat as well. Uh, if you scroll down to the bottom of that page, there's a little bit of a kind of contact us form uh, on the Bytespeed website. Uh, and we can set up a time to sit down, do a little bit of a demo for you, uh, kind of run through what some of these experiences look like live, uh, and then be able to kind of talk more about pricing and, and delivery, delivery and all that kind of stuff. So um, Matt, I guess any closing thoughts or, or things that you want to add that might not be in the, the slideshow, so to speak, but important to mention? Yeah, I, I guess what I, what I mentioned is, you know, this really is a solution that has been designed from the ground up to be something that is is checking the boxes for, for educators. Um, we want to make sure that if you're looking at deploying CareerView, that it is the right solution for you. Um, that's why we're very selective about the reseller partners we bring to the table and why we love working with Bytespeed. Um, because we want to make sure when you're talking with us about the career view solution and deploying it, we're going to give you a straight answer. We're going to give you the recommendation that's best for your school. So I, I just want to make sure that all of you know, we are a mission driven organization. This was designed to solve a problem for schools and, and we'd love to have a conversation with you if you feel like this could be a good fit. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Matt. Super appreciate your time this afternoon. Uh, great to look at kind of where things have, have come uh, after all these years and, and definitely not stopping anytime soon. Um, for those of you on the call, please uh, feel free to um, send us a message if you have more questions uh, or if you want, like I said, to get that kind of more personal uh, call set up to, to run through what a deployment might look like. And uh, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, thanks for checking things out after after the fact. I know there was uh, quite a few schools that reached out and said, we're registering, we can't make it uh, during the actual webinar, but I know that there's going to be some feedback afterwards uh, on the recording too. So um, thanks everybody for joining us this afternoon and have a great rest of your week. Thanks everyone.